Hi guys and welcome back to Brand Friendly Thinking. A couple of weeks ago I did a video on Niklas Luhmann and how he used the Zettel Custom to be more creative and more productive. Many of you enjoyed the video and said they would like to see more about the Zettel Custom. So today we're gonna do a deep dive into my own setup for the Zettel Custom. In a Zettelkasten, you take information and you break them down into atomic chunks. Then you start working with that information by linking individual Zettels to one another and summarizing the content of several Zettels in hub nodes. If you never heard the term Zettelkasten before, you might like to watch my other video where I talk about how Lumen used the Zettelkasten to be highly creative and productive. But how do you go about setting up your own Zettelkasten? For many people, when they want to set up their own Zettelkasten, it is either the first knowledge management system they set up or they want to replace an existing method with a new one. In my case, I already got a method. It works. It works well for me, but it could work better. What I got at the moment works very much with ABC Active, Carvers, playing with words, diagrams and sketching. However, I feel that I drop many important and interesting ideas which I could continue to work on and expand on. Or what I worked on two or three years ago could enrich what I'm doing right now much more than it currently is. So what I want to implement the Zettelkasten is to organize the ideas I had before and to be better able to integrate my old ideas with my new ideas. If you set up your own Zettelkasten, there are three main considerations you need to take into account. First, which platform do you want to use for your Zettel custom? Secondly, how do you write the Zettels, make the links, combine the information? And thirdly, how can you integrate this into your daily life? The first decision I had to take is, do I want a paper-based Zettel custom or do I want to go with the digital solution? And most people these days, they go for the digital solution, obviously. However, there's much to say for paper-based Zettelkasten. For instance, I find it much easier if you have real physical Zettels that you can arrange spatially in front of you and move backwards and forwards. It is much easier for me to see the connections. It feels much nicer to work with them. On the downside, however, a paper-based Zettelkasten is much harder to search. And if you're not careful and you put a Zettel in the wrong position, it's basically lost. In the end, I decided for the digital solution. However, it was not a simple decision. And if you want to set up your own Zettel custom, I would advise giving this point some careful thought. After I decided it should be a digital Zettel custom, then what digital platform should I use? To be honest, I didn't give that much thought into which platform I should use because I thought for me, it is more important to get started and to get a feeling for how the Zettel custom works rather than getting the perfect platform. So at the end, I went with Daniel Ludicus ZKN3 software because it seemed to do the job. It's comparatively simple. You can also easily export your Zettels and, and this is just a personal preference. I actually think it looks comparatively good. And with that, let's look how my Zettelkasten looks like. As you can see, here is my Zettelkasten in ZKN3. On the right side, you see the list of all my Zettels. Currently, I only got 62 Zettels so far. It's a baby Zettelkasten. I only started it on the 18th of September. However, let's look at a couple of Zettels to see what I'm actually doing and there are different types of Zettels. What you can see here on the left side is a Zettel which I extract from reading scientific papers. The summaries of the findings from scientific papers is what will form the backbone of my Zettelkasten. So for every scientific paper, you have certain experiments and you have certain findings. I'm trying to 
respect the principle of atomicity by converting every finding into one zettel. So how does such a zettel, zettel look like? At first, of course, we have a headline, a title that summarizes what the zettel is about. Then we have one sentence to maximum two sentence summary of what you can see in the zettel. And then I have several subject, subsections. First, I have the experiment subsection. Here, I summarize what the researchers have done. And I don't just copy what they say in the paper, but I actually summarize it in my own words. I usually write it in the form of a recipe. Next subsection is the result subsection. And here again, I summarize. I don't just copy from the authors, but I summarize what were their findings. Now, for the same experiment, there might be several different findings. As I said, I will branch them off into different zettles. However, in that case, I will copy and paste the experiment description for each of those finding zettles. And finally, I got uh, the number of participants and what type of participants were they. Because right now, as I'm doing my PhD in psychology, a lot depends on what type of patients or what type of people you're testing. And then finally, I've got the citation, where does the zettel actually come from? This is one type of zettel. As second type of zettel, this one is, again, goes back to uh, something I'm reading, but in this case, it's not an experimental finding, it's a definition from what I'm reading. In this case, I don't have a summary at the top because it is only a very small zettel, but I simply start with the definition, then comes examples of the definition, and these are examples actually provided in the text. And in this specific case, the definition of function optimization is contrasted with the definition of pattern transition. So already in the text, I say, okay, contrast this with pattern transition, and I link to the zettel that talks about pattern transition. To understand function optimization, it is also important to understand other concepts like exploitation and best practice. Later on, there will be zettles for this to which I want to link, but right now I haven't created the zettles yet. So I put in a placeholder in the form of curly brackets. And later, if I read this zettle again, I know I wanted to put a link there. Or I can't even search for all the zettles with curly brackets and then I see, okay, I still need to work on them. Now, the next zettel is a zettel which I create for myself. So this would be an example of a hub node. Locognosia, this is the ability to know where we've been touched on our body without looking. And I am starting to create an index based on the papers I read and specifically based on the findings which I turned into zettles. So right now I have different keywords here and for each keyword I have a number of zettles that relate to this keyword. And then finally the last one I would like to show to you is, so this one is a zettel that captures ideas which I had in relation to another zettel. And now I say this zettel refers to another zettel and here is the number of that zettel. So if I click here, in this case, it's another zettel which I created from my reading. So this zettel refers to the quote. Then comes my first comment, my first thoughts about this quote. And again here, I just had some ideas, some brainstorming, but these ideas need to be fleshed out further. So I put my curly brackets as a reminder that I want to do extra work. So I need to read more papers. Then I will probably summarize that in another hub node. And then I will link here to the summarized hub node. And based on all of this reading, then at some point there will be a conclusion as well. Well, so far for a couple of examples of how my Zettel custom look like and how I use it. Now let's look at how do I integrate this into my overall structure of working with knowledge. If you've seen any of my other videos, you know that I use ABC Active for most of my note-taking. And then after I finished reading, 
I take the words which are written down and I continue to play with them in the form of carvers, categorization or similar things. Now, how do we get from here to the Zettels? After I played around with the words for some time, I have a feeling of which of the words are the most essential to the text. These are prime candidates to be transformed into Zettels. Either one or several settles per keyword. Secondly, as I'm reading, it happens that I get further ideas, I can think of further examples, or I disagree with the author. In these cases, I make a note of that. Not only in the ABC Active, but I'm gonna write down one to five sentences that summarize my point so that I can later remember. I take these little snippets of notes and I transform them into settles in their own right. I also already shared with you the strategy lottery and how I use it to keep my focus topics active in my mind. As I said back in that video, as I'm playing with the core concepts, it happens comparatively often again that I get further ideas. I write them down and later I convert them into settles. Our ability to develop creative ideas depends a lot on how do we process that information. Why this is the case? Well, for that you can watch the video right here. Or otherwise, if you're interested in more thinking tools you can try out, you can click on this playlist right here. Otherwise, I hope you found this video useful. If you did, please don't forget to give the like button a high five. Consider subscribing if you haven't already. And until next time, keep thinking.